Lay out all parts in a logical fashion. Match service kit parts to their original component. Remove all old parts from the work surface and replace them with their kit counterpart. At the end of reassembly, nothing remains on the table. Install a lightly lubricated O-ring on the head of the piston. Excessive lubricant will serve only to attract grit that floats into the regulator via the ambient holes in the lower body. Carefully install the stiff high-pressure O-ring on the shaft of the piston, using a thumbnail or thin pick to guide it over the conical shoulder at the top of the shaft. Take care to not excessively stretch this hard O-ring. Press the high-pressure seat into the recess at the top of the piston until it engages. Inspect the seat alignment. Invert the piston, press against a firm fatted surface, and push the seat fully into place. Inspect the seat to ensure that it is flat in the recess. Slide the plastic cap onto the upper body with the rounded edge toward the oval ambient holes. Work it into place with your fingers and adjust its position with a blunt brass spade as necessary. Wipe a thin film of lubricant on the shiny piston head land inside the lower body. Then place the lower body on a flat surface. Holding the piston perfectly vertical, set it in the cup of the lower body. Make sure it is symmetrical before applying pressure. Push it into place while feeling for any resistance suggesting O-ring extrusion. If the O-ring starts to extrude, pull back and try again. Add a washer to the base of the piston, followed by the spring. Place two tiny dots of lubricant on the top of the spring as a temporary adhesive and tack the second washer to the top of the spring. This will help keep it in position during assembly. Invert the upper body and lower it onto the piston assembly, keeping it perfectly centered. With the two halves aligned, press the halves firmly together and screw clockwise until the first thread engages. Continue turning clockwise at least one half turn to avoid damage to the first thread from spring pressure. Screw the upper and lower body together as much as you can. Mount the upper body in a vise using a vise handle screw to a high pressure port. Attach a number 5 hook spanner with a 4.8 mm pin. Maintain control of the pin so the hook spanner does not slip and damage the chrome. Tighten the lower body until there is firm metal-to-metal -metal contact with the upper body. When held up to a light, there should be no visible gap between the two halves. There is no torque setting. Install an unlubricated O-ring on the filter. Ensure that your fingertips are clean to avoid clogging the filter with lubricant. Using a thin wooden dowel, push the filter and O-ring down into the DIN housing. Install a lightly lubricated O-ring on the threaded end of the DIN housing. Do not lubricate the threads. The hex flats of the DIN housing are deliberately shallow to allow free rotation of the DIN knob. If an open-end crowfoot attachment is used to torque this fitting, all the force is concentrated on two flats and there is a risk of fracturing a point if the wrench slips or excessive torque is applied. Instead, a six-point socket will apply force on all sides of the fitting. However, most sockets have a chamfer which reduces the area over which force is applied. Consider grinding the chamfer from a six-point socket so that the full height of these shallow hex flats is contacted by the tool. 
with the regulator mounted on a vice handle, hand thread the DIN housing down into the body, finger tight. Using your choice of tool, torque the DIN housing to 260 inch-pounds in a single smooth motion. Do not walk the housing into place with repeated application of torque. Add a lightly lubricated o-ring to the threaded end of the DIN retainer. Place an unlubricated DIN o-ring into its groove in the top of the retainer. Inspect to confirm that it is fully seated. Mount the regulator on a vice handle and install the DIN knob confirming free rotation. Screw the retainer into the DIN housing. Using a 6mm straight shaft hex socket, torque the DIN retainer to 150 inch-pounds in a single smooth motion. Do not walk the housing into place with repeated application of torque. More important, do not use a ball end hex key. The surface area is inadequate for this amount of torque and you will damage the flats in the brooch of this fitting. The lesser torque of the DIN retainer compared to the torque used on the DIN housing below it is critical. This ensures that at disassembly the DIN retainer loosens first and does not dislodge the DIN housing either from a tank or a regulated source, obtain a gas supply at 500 PSI. Fill open low pressure ports and install your regulator on your 500 PSI source. Install a tuned second stage as a safety valve and a BCD hose with attached IP gauge. With pressure on the second stage purge button, slowly open the tank while watching intermediate pressure. If the IP exceeds 145 PSI, immediately turn off the tank before releasing the purge button. In this case, the regulator will require disassembly and inspection. With a finger on the purge, we will now pressurize the regulator. With the initial IP not exceeding 145 PSI, release the purge button and watch IP for one minute. IP drift of a few PSI before locking up at a slightly higher value is common with a new high pressure seat. In contrast, IP creep, which does not stop but continues beyond 145 PSI, is an out of specification condition that requires disassembly and inspection of the volcano and high pressure seat. Cycle the second stage several dozen times to improve the mating surface between the orifice and seat. IP drift will typically disappear with use. Specification IP at 500 tank is 120 plus or minus 5 PSI. Thus, at 115 PSI, this regulator is within specification. With a stable IP at a near empty tank, depressurize the system and move the set to a full tank. With the regulator set now connected to a tank at 3000 PSI, once again pressurize while watching IP. Remember to use pressure on the purge button as a safety valve. If the IP on tank opening does not exceed 145 PSI, Release the purge button and watch intermediate pressure for one minute. It should lock up below 145 PSI. Watch for IP drift with lock up within spec or IP creep beyond 145 PSI, which again necessitates disassembly. Typically, with this unbalanced piston regulator, IP at 3000 PSI tank will be 25 PSI higher than the intermediate pressure noted at 500. Cycle the regulator and confirm crisp lockup. 
in use since IP will drop 25 PSI as the tank empties during a dive, it is important to ensure that attached components can perform adequately over the entire range of supplied intermediate pressures. While the service manual does not discuss tuning the intermediate pressure of this regulator if out of specification, this design is one of the simplest and most rugged on the market. Consult the tips and tricks document on the Dive Gear Express website for similarities between the first regulator and similar models from other manufacturers which offer tuning instructions. This completes reassembly and testing of the Dive Gear Express first first stage regulator. Dive Gear Express videos are made available for educational purposes only, to provide general understanding of scuba diving related topics and not to provide specific advice. Please read the essential information page at the URL shown.